Good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome to students joining us here for this evening's program. Let people kind of join on here. Very excited to see you joining us for the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. Students and parents, just a couple of reminders um, as you're entering into the room. Uh, the Q&A button down below, if at any point you have a question, please feel free to type that to our presenters uh, and they will get back to you with a response. Uh, students, your camera and microphone are off, um, so panelists can't see or hear you. Uh, and also there, um, actually tonight, this is the last session for the evening, so no more TACAC sessions, but keep an eye out for StriveScan for additional fairs throughout the spring. Uh, and this will be available and recorded at strivescan.com slash Texas. Without further ado, I am going to pass it off to our first presenter from the University of Maine, Machias. Awesome, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for coming tonight. I know you're probably all a little Zoom fatigued, so I appreciate you hanging around for us. So my name is Dorsey Hill. I am an admissions counselor from the University of Maine at Machias. So just to start you off, here are some beautiful photos of our campus. We're in an incredibly rural area of down east Maine. So this is a map of Maine. So we're right here, this green star on the coast. We are about an hour south of New Brunswick, Canada, about two hours from Bangor and Orono. Those are our nearest big, big cities. Um, and we are also about four hours north of Portland and six hours from Boston. So we are right on the coast. We have beautiful beaches within 15 minutes of campus, but we also have vast wilderness behind our campus as well. We have about 243 acres of land. So we are the perfect place if you're into the outdoors, you're into hunting, fishing, swimming, kayaking, all of that. So just some fun facts about UMM. We are an incredibly small public university, part of the University of Maine system. We have about 750 students total, which means that you will have incredibly small class sizes. They'll be incredibly hands-on from day one, and your professors will get to know you on a personal level. They will get to know what you want to do with your career, you know, in the future. They'll want, you know, they'll want to get to know what you want to do for internships, job opportunities, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, so you can work on those. And you really get a more personalized education, which is wonderful. Um, our average class is about 13. Um, and as I said, you know, we have beautiful um, campus venue. We've also been voted one of the top 30 LGBTQ plus campuses in the United, in the United States, thanks to the Campus Pride Index. Uh, every year, typically, um, obviously COVID has thrown things for a little bit of a loop, uh, but typically every year we would host the Rainbow Ball, which is a prom for LGBTQ plus high school students who may not feel comfortable at their own proms and ways for them to get different resources. We're also an incredibly affordable school. I'll get into that a little bit later, but 99% of our students get some form of financial aid, which is amazing. We are the regional campus for the flagship campus in the University of Maine system located in Orno. This gives us a lot of opportunities um, to take advantage of the flagship's four and one master's programs. So what that means is you would get your bachelor's degree from UMM in four years and then go to Orno to the flagship campus and get your master's done in just a year, which saves time and money and everybody loves that. We also get to take advantage of their over 407 opportunities for study abroad. So we've had students who have gone everywhere from Venezuela to Japan, Ireland, a little bit of everywhere. We were also ranked one of the top socially mobile universities in the Northeast. So that basically means that no matter what your starting point is, you have the same opportunity at success. We know that not everybody has the same background, the same resources, so we pride ourselves on that. Some of our most popular majors are marine biology, psychology, conservation law, education, and wildlife biology. Those are just a few, but we have many other programs as well. And we pride ourselves on being hands-on from day one. As I said, we have small course sizes, so that gives us the ability to be hands-on from day one. You're not just going to be sitting in a lecture hall, you're going to be out getting field experience. So just some examples of that, I have pictures on the slide. Our top one is from one of our wildlife biology courses. 
We work a lot with community partnerships and programs. So our students in the wildlife biology program get to work with the Maine State Bear Tagging Team. So they go out on den surveys. So what they do is they humanely tranquilize the animals, weigh them, measure them, and get different data. And this helps with future studies and population monitoring. We have a lot of graduates um, who ended up working for them and they got their foot in the door starting with the Maine State Bear Tagging Team in these classes. The second picture is from one of our conservation law programs. So that's for students who are interested in being a game warden or a park ranger. Um, if you've ever seen the show Northwoods Law, it's about the game wardens of Maine. Some of those game wardens have graduated from UMM and some of them actually come back and teach for us. Bill McBride is in this picture leading this class. Um, they were doing a mock crime scene and mock rescue. So they um, take our students on ride along so you get to see what it's like in the day of a life of a warden. And down at the bottom is a photo of our students going whitewater rafting. So as I said earlier, we're an incredibly affordable um, institution. So our average uh, cost for out-of-state students per year is seven to $8,000 after tuition um, aid is taken off, scholarships, any sort of financial aid. And we have quite a few different merit scholarships. So with these merit scholarships, there is absolutely no separate application. We would just look at your GPA or SAT score. And we are SAT optional, but we do encourage folks to send them in because if your SAT or ACT score gets you a higher scholarship than your GPA would, we will honor whichever is highest. Or vice versa, you know, if you have a high GPA, but you don't do so hot on the ACTs or SATs, that's totally fine. We will honor whichever is highest and whichever gets you the most money. So we have a variety of options for applications. So we have the system-wide application, we have our UMM specific application, and we are also on the Common App. And all of those applications are free for students. So there is no cost. I tell people it never hurts to apply to multiple places. Um, and we also are open for in-person tours right now or virtual tours. What we will do is we will Zoom you with a counselor and they can do either an on-the-spot acceptance as long as they have your application and a transcript, or you can just get some general info and then we will send you out on a uh, FaceTime or Zoom tour with one of our wonderful student ambassadors. So feel free to call us, apply. We are always happy to help. And I put some of my information down below. So feel free to reach out if you do need anything. And once again, thank you for joining us tonight. And please feel free to look at a bunch of different schools tonight. Keep an open mind. And as always, ask questions. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. We will now move on to our presenter from Suffolk University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let me get my screen share going right here. And hello everyone, my name is Patrick Dean and I'm an admissions counselor here at Suffolk University. Where we are located is actually right in the heart of downtown Boston. I don't know if you've ever been to the city before, but if you've had, you might've gone to some historical sites like the Granary Bearing Ground right over here where like um, Paul Revere, John Hancock, Sam Adams are all buried right over here. Or you went to the old Massachusetts State House where the Boston Massacre happened. All of our, one of our residence halls is located right next to there and our buildings are surrounding the Granary Burying Ground right over here. So we're very much incorporated right into the city of Boston and everything that surrounds us, as well as the different sports teams, companies, coffee shops, everything that you can really get involved in. All of these little T markers right over here is our subway system too. So our students do get discounted T passes and they can go basically anywhere you want to in the city of Boston. And you can go up to North Station over here to go pretty much anywhere you want to in Northern New England and go down to South Station, which can take you as far down to Providence, Rhode Island. So not only do you get great access to the city of Boston, but you get great access to the New England area as well. To talk about some of our majors, we have just over 70 undergraduate programs and just under 5,000 undergraduate students. We try to keep an average um, class size of about 21 and a student faculty ratio of 15 to one. Between the College of Arts and Sciences, we have just about those 70 undergraduate programs that you can find here. We also have a graduate school with just about 1,000 students and our Suffolk University Law School, which is how we started, which also has just about 1,000 students. 
we do offer accelerated master's programs for students if they want to do their four years tack on one extra year to get a bachelor's to master's degree. And we also offer a three plus three law program where you can start working with our law school faculty in your undergraduate career. And then in your senior year, you will transition into law school. So it's a lot of great opportunities for students and also a lot of good opportunity for a crossover between the colleges. For example, we have a lot of our students in um, graphic design who end up getting a minor in something like digital marketing or even doing a full on double major in graphic design and digital marketing. We try to make those majors as flexible as possible for students to try to give you a good breadth of knowledge. While academics is going to be the keystone to your college experience, it's not the only thing about the experience. So we have just over 100 clubs that you can get involved in. I believe Video Gamers Army is the number one on campus right now, and a bunch of leadership opportunities such as Student Government Association, which does a great job getting students engaged on campus and helping run all the clubs that we have. We have a ton of alternative break trips like working for Habitat for Humanity down in Cambodia or going down to DC to fight for LGBTQ advocacy and racial justice. Um, Boston gives our students so much with the different companies that we're partnered with and everything that our, the city really gives our campus. So we do everything we can to try to give back to the city with our students doing over 20,000 hours of community service last year, which we are extremely proud of them for that. We also offer 19 NCAA Division III teams on campus. I'm the, I'm the athletics liaison for the admissions department. So if you have any questions whatsoever about athletics, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. We just moved into the Commonwealth Coastal Conference this year. So it's a brand new conference for us. We're very excited to um, start our back to play with our hockey team and basketball team recently. Kind of fun fact about our women's hockey team. Um, our women's hockey coach was actually the only NCAA coach playing in the Isabel Cup um, a bubble for the National Women's Hockey League in the Buffalo Butte. So it was kind of cool to see her uh, playing professionally and still coaching the team at the same time. For any student who's at all interested in study abroad and international experiences, we offer a plethora of opportunities for you. Probably the biggest one that we have is our own campus located right in the heart of Madrid, Spain. Students can go there for as little as a semester, two semesters, two years, a summer program, or even doing all four years in Madrid if they do international relations as a major. It's also home to our Global Gateway Program. This is where you have the opportunity to spend your first year spring break at our Madrid campus. It's the best opportunity that you can get to one, take spring break in Spain at the cheapest cost you could possibly have, and two, just kind of get your toes wet in the Madrid campus and see, well, you know what, maybe I like it here and maybe I wanna go back for my next semester and get the full Madrid experience. It's really a beautiful campus and it offers you great access to not just Spain, but all of Europe as well. We also are partnered with over uh, 50 programs in over 30 countries that you can find all down here. And right now our campus, our, of our campus population, about 19% of our students are international students and of our domestic population, 34% identify as students of color. We have over 20 cultural affinity organizations to really show and promote the diversity that we have on campus. Just to quickly touch on some application information, we do require the common application or the Suffolk application, whichever one is more convenient for you. We require a high school transcript, essay, one letter of recommendation, and we are test optional. That's not gonna change anytime soon. It's not going away. We are staying test optional for the foreseeable future for us. So if you feel like your scores don't represent you, you feel like you didn't do as well as you could on the score test, don't send them our way. It's not gonna hurt you in any way, shape or form. Our deadlines are gonna be right over here, November 15th for early action, February, uh, February 15th for regular decision. If any student who is a current senior now, um, we extended it to March 15th. So there is still time to get that uh, last minute application in just in case. And all students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. And for need-based aid, we only require the FAFSA. You can find my email right down here, pdean2 at suffolk.edu. If you have any questions whatsoever, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm here to help you out as much as I possibly can. Thank you so much for your time. Great, and on to our next presenter from Simmons University. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Dana Bradstreet, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm one of the admission counselors at Simmons. Um, Simmons is located in Boston, so we're not that far from Suffolk. I'll show you um, on a map in the next slide. Um, we are pretty small, about 1,800 students. Um, we have about 49% uh, of our students are students of color, 48% are the first in their family to go to college. Um, I would say most of our students do come from the Northeast, um, but Texas is one of our bigger states outside of the Northeast. 
Um, we have more than 70 student organizations, um, 10 division three sports, um, and more than 60 majors and programs. And again, I'll put those up the next slide. Um, Simmons is focused on liberal arts and sciences and combining that with professional preparation. We're also a woman-centered college, so um, a strong focus on women's leadership and empowerment. Um, Simmons is also primarily residential. Most of our students either live on campus or in a Boston apartment nearby. Um, so just to show you on this map where Simmons is, um, you know, you just heard from Suffolk and they're kind of down here, um, Beacon Hill, Boston Common. Um, Simmons is here. We're just a couple train stops away. Um, we are located in the Fenway neighborhood. So the Boston Red Sox um, where, where they play. Uh, if there's a home game and you've got your windows open, you'll hear the shouting. Um, we are in um, the big hospital district. So many of our students who are majoring in health sciences or even other programs like social work or business um, will have amazing internships and clinical experiences at the best hospitals in the country. Um, we're also in with the arts neighborhood. Um, so a lot of uh, several art museums and galleries and symphony hall and a lot of places are going to give you free or discounted admission for being a college student. Um, in terms of getting to Boston, it's pretty easy. You can fly right into Logan Airport, which is across Boston Harbor, um, and then take the train to get to campus. I have our list of majors here. I'm not going to read them all, but I will say some of our larger majors um, are including nursing, physical therapy, nutrition, biology, other health and life sciences, um, business, communications, psychology, social work, um, English, political science, and international relations. Um, on the right, we have listed um, some of our accelerated programs. I do wanna point those out because it's a great way to save some time and save some money um, by staying on at Simmons for your graduate degree. Most of those programs do require a separate application because you have a pretty rigorous curriculum, right? You're starting those um, classes right away in your first year. So you do have to apply for most of those. Um, but our other programs, for the most part, you have your first two years to change your major and declare later on. Um, and I think that's the beauty of having a liberal arts philosophy. As I mentioned, we combine liberal arts with professional preparation where all of our students have to do some sort of hands-on learning, whether that is research or clinical or an internship. Um, and it all adds up to be pretty successful. Um, we have uh, six months after we graduate, 96% um, of our students are either employed or in graduate school. Um, some really cool you know, examples like a student going down to Florida to get a master's degree in bio and save the manatees, um, a nursing student working with Lifestar and being up there in the helicopters, um, a computer science student working for Twitter, um, a graphic design student working for um, Snapchat to, to create some of the filters. Um, Simmons is a woman-centered college, as I mentioned, so admission is limited to women as well as students who were assigned female at birth. Um, we have some cool stats down here. My favorite one is one that's not even on here. That's your 12 times as likely to stick with a STEM major versus women who go to co-ed schools. So you're 12 times as likely. Um, I, that's amazing. Um, and I really think it's just because of the extra support, um, the empowerment, three quarters of our faculty and staff are women. Um, we have additionally uh, just a lot of resources, um, guest speakers, workshops, a leadership class in your first year. Um, so you're well supported um, in your leadership. Um, in terms of next steps, if you are a senior, there is still time to apply. Just definitely reach out to us as soon as you can. Um, we are a free application um, and we are on the common application. So it just makes life easier for you and for your school. Um, if you are a junior, you know, keep an eye out. We have two early action deadlines as well as a regular decision deadline. Um, we are not open for our tours right now unless you're an admitted student, um, but in the summer we will be resuming tours for everybody. Um, we have virtual tours as well as a number of um, panels and information sessions, things like that. Um, but I do wanna highlight our FinPals program, which lets you email with a current student. And I think it's a really great way to hear firsthand what it's like to be at Simmons, um, especially for those of you who might have questions about what it's like to attend a woman-centered institution or what it's like to come all the way from Texas to Boston. Um, so I definitely encourage you to check out our FinPals program um, to speak with a current student. All right, thanks so much uh, for your few minutes and enjoy the rest of the presentation. Great, thank you. We will now move on to Merrimack College. 
Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Daudi Torres. I use him, his pronouns, and I'm really, really excited to take this opportunity to speak to every one of you about Merrimack and what we have to offer. Um, I know me and my colleagues are here today are really, really excited to inform you about all of our schools. So don't be afraid to ask questions and, and, and help us understand what you're looking for in this process. So a little bit about Merrimack. We're a school that's located about 30 miles north of Boston, so in, in, in New England. Our population, uh, one of the best things about Merrimack and Merrimack overall is that with my presentations, I like to always talk about numbers first to kind of give students a perspective of who we are and giving you kind of an idea of our, our population. So our population right now, we're around close to 4,000 undergrad students um, and a little bit over close to about 1,000 grad. Um, so right now we're hovering around that 5,000 uh, mark. So our students come from over 30 states and about 30 countries. So truly becoming a global powerhouse in a sense that you have a student that, a student that comes from down the street or that comes from the other side of the globe. And that's what makes Merrimack very unique because with our student population, um, that's what makes Merrimack the special place that, that we are. Our population, our average classroom size is 21, student faculty ratio is 15 to one. So with us, you get the best of both worlds because we're big enough that there's a lot to do, but we're small enough that you're gonna get more of that personalized attention in the classroom. Until about two years ago, we were about 50-50. So it was very interesting to see in the last year or so how we've moved more into the female um, side. And one of the biggest reasons for that um, is about two years ago, we started our new nursing program. So to kind of give you a glance, as you can see here on the screen, this kind of gives you an idea of our academic background and who we are as an institution. So our most popular program um, in school, I would say, is business, which about 32% of our students are on business. However, that's not all that we are. We have over 100 different academic majors to choose from. So there's a variety of options depending on what students ultimately want to do. I always say about 20% of our incoming class does come in undeclared and the other 80%, about half of them change their major by the time the sophomore year rolls around. So again, I always think it's important for all of our students to have a lot of different options as they're learning about the schools and kind of getting an idea of who we are as an institution that they understand who we are here at Merrimack. One of the biggest things that's very unique to Merrimack is that we're very career focused. And what I mean by being career focused is that every student that comes in will have a team. So you're gonna get an academic advisor, an academic coach, and then also a career coach. And all three of them are gonna work very well together to make sure that you're successful. Being career focused is important for us because we believe that at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that yes, you're in the classroom, that you're learning all this material, but at the end of the day that you're gonna apply all these things to the real world. That's why with us, we have that 86% that does a um, some form of internship or co-op. The others 14% will do some form of research opportunity on campus. So again, at certain points, depending on what you ultimately wanna do, we're gonna help you to get there. Because at the end of the day, you will have, for example, 10 students that are interested in biology. They're all gonna have the same degree at the end of the day. What's gonna make you unique is are those experiences that you're gonna get outside the classroom. And that's what we wanna try to focus on, making sure that those students have that experience outside the classroom. That's why, you know, we're like a class I graduated last year, 96% of them are actually working full time or getting a master's degree. So that showcase how well we work with our students throughout the four years to make sure that we're helping you become successful. And one of the biggest things is that with us, after you graduate, we wanna make sure that you're successful even down the road. So that's why we also did research with our students that graduated 10 years ago, and 60% of them are actually making higher than the national average in their field, which again, showcases what we're doing in the classroom with them is actually truly working in their behalf. So one of the biggest things, so now we talked a little bit about everything else, um, our application process. So our application process at Merrimack, we have a very holistic approach on how we review the application. So we look at a variety of things when we're looking at a student. So we have Common App and our own application. So either or is completely fine, depending on what the students decide to fill out. We do require high school transcripts, secondary school report, uh, a variety of things, because again, we wanna make sure we're getting to know the student um, in the process. We are test optional and we do not have an application fee as well too. So again, giving that student the opportunity to showcase who they are in the admissions process. One thing that you don't see on the slide, but it's very important to us are interviews. So interviews are not required, but again, they're highly recommended because it gives students an opportunity to get to know us a little bit better in the process. With us, we do have a couple of deadlines in place. So we have early decision, early action and regular. And again, depending on when you feel comfortable in applying, you could definitely submit the application. So I always encourage students definitely 
submit the application to when you feel comfortable in, in, in the admissions process. And with us, we have been test optional for over 10 years now, um, with the exception of nursing. However, that did change this year. And I do believe that we have developed a plan to make sure that we are helping our students as much as we can during that process. So all of our students that get accepted will get some form of merit scholarship from us. So 99% of our students will receive some form of grant or scholarship, again, depending on your academic background. And that was equivalent to about $80 million last year. So we are very, very generous with our financial aid. So I would definitely encourage you all to, if you are interested in applying for financial aid, all we require is the FAFSA form as well too. So the average cost uh, annual tuition and fees is usually around 20,000 out of that 43,000 mark. So again, I would definitely encourage students that if you are interested in applying for aid, definitely, definitely do so. So that kind of wraps everything up. Um, I always like to do these short and sweet and simple. Um, so as you can see here, there's a beautiful picture of our campus. So again, we are having visitors on campus. All we need is for students um, to have negative COVID tests within the 72 hour time frame for visiting campus. So, but I would advise if you are interested in visiting us, we definitely do have uh, uh, opportunities for you to visit um, on our website for virtual visits. So thank you so much. Great, thank you. And we will pass it off to our next presenter from Maine Maritime Academy. Hey everybody, how's it going tonight? I can just one moment, get all this set up. So my name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm an admissions counselor at Maine Maritime Academy. And I'm super excited to tell you all about the incredible opportunities at this school. Um, some of you might already be familiar with the State Maritime Academy system because there is one in your home state of Texas. And believe it or not, we do get quite a few applicants from Texas. Uh, Texans seem to wanna to come enjoy the winter up here. <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind as we move through this. So um, as the name implies, there's sort of a common thread between all of our majors. They are very maritime uh, and ocean focused. Um, you can even see it in our central picture right here. It is the waterfront of our campus located in Castine, Maine, about halfway up the coast. Um, so we do have this working waterfront in which we have over 60 uh, training, research, pleasure, and sail vessels that are basically at your disposal. And you should take every advantage to be out on the water, maybe in the water doing scuba, things like that. So I'll delve in just a little bit. Um, we are a small campus, as I mentioned, about 35 acres, and we are directly on uh, the coast of Maine. Uh, we do offer 23 different degree programs. Um, they tend to span engineering, international business and logistics, marine transportation, as well as um, ocean sciences. I'll delve into those in just a moment as well. Sort of uh, embedded within all those different degree programs are seven professional licensing opportunities, five of which are through the US Coast Guard. Um, so you can get licenses uh, in the unlimited tonnage category that would allow you to operate any size vessels all over the world. And, um, or you can get smaller size licenses if you're interested in more um, coastal oriented types of vessels. So because we're a small school, we're at around 950 undergraduates, which uh, allows you to have very small class sizes. You're going to get to know your professors one on one. There's going to be a lot of accountability as well as academic support to make sure that you're successful. Um, and we do have a variety of clubs and organizations on campus. Um, very often, these different clubs are offering different opportunities to get you out on the water uh, to, again, take full advantage of that ocean classroom that we have. And we are a Division three school, and we offer 15 varsity sports, both male and female teams. Uh, so whether or not you're interested in playing, you know that there's sort of a little something exciting happening on campus and there's some mariners to go root for. As I mentioned before, these are our four academic programs that we offer. Engineering, you can go either marine or the power engineering side, more of that land-based engineering that you kind of expect. Uh, international business and logistics, so imports, exports, international trade, transportation, getting those um, Someday captain's licenses, you're learning all those navigation pieces to actually operate those vessels. And then ocean studies. Uh, so getting that marine biology, that oceanography or coastal marine environmental science piece. And one kind of special thing about that at our institution is in addition to learning that science, um, getting those hands-on opportunities, as you can see with our students here, 
uh, but they also take out our research vessel. So in addition to learning all of those different um, sampling techniques, sampling equipment aboard the vessel, uh, if they so choose, they're able to get that US Coast Guard license that allows them to operate the vessel. So that way they can drive the boats to the places where they want to conduct their research. Uh, all of our classes are quite hands-on across the board, regardless of what major that you are in. Um, so depending on where you are, you'll likely be on a boat that very first week of the semester. You might be handling lines. You might already be tinkering with engines, taking them apart. You might be in the logistics lab, already brainstorming products to bring to market, things like that. So we pride ourselves on being a very hands-on education. Uh, I can't uh, ever go without mentioning our regiment of midshipmen. So this certainly sets our students apart. About two thirds, 65% of our student body are in this uniformed regiment of midshipmen. Although it looks very much like a military academy, there is no military obligation uh, for our students when they graduate. This, however, is a requirement from the Coast Guard. For those students getting those unlimited tonnage license made, uh, unlimited tonnage licenses, either in engineering or in transportation. So in order to get those licenses, they need a certain number of days out at sea and quite a bit of preparation to make sure they're ready to go. So it's actually a Coast Guard requirement. When these students graduate, they go on to work for uh, commercial vessels. And for everyone else, it's voluntary to join. Um, similar to many of the colleges you've heard from tonight, we do put quite emphasis on uh, your summer opportunities to make sure that you are getting uh, the professional experience you need over the summer, either through crews with our training ship, our 500 foot training vessel that tends to go across the Atlantic, visits different ports all over Europe, um, as well as down in the Caribbean, or over co-ops and internships that get you right into the industry, working alongside industry professionals. And we hook you up with these opportunities. We make sure that our students um, are connected to these companies, either through our alumni network or just because Maine Maritime grads have that really stellar reputation. In fact, over 90% of our students are employed in their field within 90 days of graduation. Uh, I'd love to tell you that that was still true last year with the COVID. Um, the 90% portion was, but certainly not the 90 days of graduation, uh, especially in the maritime industry. Uh, things slowed down for a bit, but they're definitely picking back up. I'm going to skip those. Um, with my last few seconds, I just wanted to thank you so much for your time tonight, and I wish you all well. And uh, as always, you can contact me, elizabeth.allity at mma.edu. We can set up a visit for you. Have a good one. Great, thank you. And on to our next presenter, Bowdoin College. All right, let's try to wrap this up quickly. <laughs> All right, so hello everyone. My name is Kyra Green. I'm an assistant dean of admissions at Bowdoin College. We are located on the coast of Maine, right by the ocean, very beautiful place to be. Um, we are a school of about 2,000 undergraduate students, meaning 500 per incoming class. Our largest majors, in no particular order, are environmental science, given our location alongside government and legal studies, English, history, and neuroscience. Um, in terms of our location, we are a place that's really connected to where we are. And so we like to think we get a lot of our values and really strong traits from our home state of Maine. Maine is a place where people are incredibly welcoming. They have really independent spirits. They're humble and they are straightforward and tell it like it is. And so we tend to attract students who share some of those qualities. In terms of our location, once again, um, as I mentioned, we're in Brunswick, um, which can be described as a small town. However, there's still a ton going on. There's about 60 restaurants you can go to in downtown Brunswick. There's an escape room, a bowling alley, a movie theater. There's a TJ Maxx, which is very important to me. And there's also a Target and Walmart, 10 minutes in either direction. So in my mind, that makes us a city. We also are about a 10 minute walk from an Amtrak station and Concord coach bus line, which means you can get to larger cities with no hassle at all. We're also about 30 minutes from Portland, Maine, the largest city in Maine, um, a town that has often been um, compared to Austin, Texas, which is of course of interest to you all. Um, just a really artistic city, a really walkable city and a place where you can get to and fro without too much struggle. Given our location near Portland, we're also able to be near the International Jet Port 
And so this makes it really easy for students to get to us from across the country and around the world. In addition to our campus, we also have a couple other facilities where students can conduct research and collaborate with faculty members. One of these is the Shirley Coastal Study Center, which is located about a 20 minute drive from campus. And it's a place where you can do a lot of marine science work, a lot of environmental studies, a lot of earth, earth and oceanographic studies. And so it's a place where you can really dive into research, but also do some programming away from campus as well. We also have a facility in the Bay of Fundy on Kent Island in Canada, where students can be paid to do research for about 10 weeks each summer. And you can be in any department, any major to take part in those opportunities. Beyond academics, there's also a ton going on outside of the classroom. We do offer athletics at three different levels, varsity, club, and intramural. So if you don't want to go out for a D3 sport, you can still do things like pick up basketball, rugby, that type of thing. We also have a ton of performances, lectures, speakers who come in, um, and then, of course, over 120 clubs for you to choose from. And if none of that sounds like it's of interest to you, you can always create your own opportunities with funding from the college. In terms of who we are, we were founded with this notion of the common good, an idea that your vote in education shouldn't just be used for personal gain, but should be shared with others. And that is still really integral to who we are and who we attract to this place. And so that means we get students who really think strongly about collaboration, who see an issue as us against a problem as opposed to us against one another. And so there's not the competitive, a competitive vibe on campus. Students definitely want to do their best, but they want to work together to do their best. And this is true amongst faculty as well. Our faculty members only teach two classes per semester. And so this means they are very much accessible and available to you all, not just to do research, not just for office hours, but to really get to know you in meaningful ways and make those connections that are going to be lifelong. So with this commitment to the common good, what does that mean for life after graduation? Some of our students certainly go into the nonprofit sector, doing things like healthcare, doing things like law enforcement, doing things like education. Um, that's certainly a big draw for our students, but they also go into the for-profit world um, and are sitting on the boards of or founding or working for some of the most influential companies in the world. For example, the founder of Netflix attended Bowdoin and has found his own way to really commit to the common good through his work. Um, he's a really big advocate for um, educational equity, and so he has done a lot of philanthropy in that field. If you're not yet prepared to go into, into the for-profit world or nonprofit world, you can always go off to graduate school, which is what the other segment of our graduates tend to do. And these are just some of the schools where the largest number of Bowdoin alums are enrolled currently. So with all of this in mind, what are we looking for in your application? Two things, it's very simple, grades and heart. We are a place where the work is hard, it's challenging, it's real, the questions are big. And so we certainly need students who are up to the task, but we also want people who are kind and are going to really embody that notion of the common good, who wanna share their education, who want to go out into the world and think beyond themselves. Something we are not looking for is income. We are a need blind institution, meaning that your decision to apply for aid does not impact our decision to admit you. We're also a school that meets full demonstrated need for all of our students, and we um, are also a school that packages without any loans, meaning that in your aid award from Bowdoin, you will see grant money, you may see work study, you may see other scholarships, but you will not see any loans. This does not mean that for your family contribution, you cannot supplement with loans, but in terms of the packaging from us, there will be no loans in your aid award. We're also not looking for test scores. We were the very first go to go test optional back in 1969. So we have had a lot of time to really hone our process and get a sense of your capabilities by using other pieces of your application. So I'll leave you with our offer of the college, a poem written by our seventh president that's simply our promise to our students. Thank you for joining us tonight. Great, thank you so much. Thank you to all our presenters this evening. We are uh, concluded now with our six sessions here that we just presented. So students, as you are clicking out, just wanna remind you um, that we do have a survey for when you click out. Uh, and this is the end of our TACAC fair. Uh, so no more sessions this evening and this recording will be available later on. 
at strivescan.com slash Texas. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us this evening and have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thank you.